Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Back with me at the market site in Times Square, we have Caleb Silver. He's the Editor-in-Chief over Investopedia. And we're going to take a look at what zero commission looks like with the online brokers. Caleb, great to have you with me. Good to be. As always, we should have our own talk show we here. We should. All right. Let the, you know, this is a big topic of conversation, whether it's at a bar, at a cab, conferences, what this new environment looks like because the brokers, not just with going to zero commission, but their landscape has changed dramatically over the past couple of years. Right, it's been a big change and an evolution, but the last two weeks has been a tectonic shift in the world of online brokers, with many of them, the biggest, going to zero commissions for trades. And that's a big deal because what they want to do, what brokers want to do, even what the NASDAQ wants to do is reduce friction between the investor and uh, the stocks they want to buy or the securities they want to buy. Price was an issue for some of them, but price has been coming down over the last few years, as you just suggested, all the way down to $4 a trade, $2 a trade, Robin Hoods of the world, $0 per trade. Now that the big brokers are doing this, the landscape has really shifted. Well, how will brokers make up their revenue? And I would have to imagine that they have modeled this out, and this wasn't a surprise to many of them. Um, and a lot of the online brokers, they've really been in the business of collecting assets over the past couple of years. Yeah. So what does this look like for them? Well, it depends on your business model. And you can look at how the, the market reaction when these announcements came out in the last couple of weeks to see who might be getting hurt the most. So Schwab is a, one of the biggest brokers. It's got about $5 trillion in assets under management. Trading is just one little piece of its operation, and they quantify that at between 80 and $100 million a year in revenue from commissions. They did $10 billion last year, so it's a small drop for the Schwabs of the world, for the TDAs of the world, for the E-Trades of the world that are more trading focused. This is a bigger part of their profits, um, so it's gonna hurt them a little bit more. But online brokers make money through order flow, so taking a bunch of different trades, packaging them together, sending them out to a custodian or to another uh, house to do the trade. They get paid for order flow. And a lot of them, like Schwab, like Fidelity, are really banks. So they get paid on the cash you have that is not invested in securities. It's basically interest that they can earn any way they can with their free, with the free cash that they have sitting on the sideline until you put it to work. So the TDs and the E-Trades of the world will be thinking that with free commission, they'll get more volume and they'll make it up with the order flows there. Um, how does this impact investors and execution quality? Because you know the expression, you pay for what you get. Exactly. We have an expression that when it's free, you are the product, right? You, the user, are the product. And that they are using your information. They're collecting a lot of data. Uh, to Who knows how they'll use that? They're using it um, for price discovery. They're seeing what people are trading. But for the individual investor that doesn't trade that frequently, they're not really gonna feel it that much. If you're the type of investor that likes to trade your own account and you trade a few times a week, uh, maybe several times a month, you'll, you'll be appreciative of the zero commissions. Most people don't do that. Most people put some money to work, maybe they rebalance quarterly, maybe they go into a stock here or there, buy some ETFs, but they don't do it that frequently where the commissions really add up for them. So they won't feel it that much. They may feel it as these online brokers add other services and fees to make up for lost revenue, and then they can decide whether or not they want to stay with that broker or experiment somewhere else. Bigger picture, this is going to be interesting for consolidation and M&A within the space, I would imagine. Yeah, so you got to feel like some of these newer brokers that have come on the scene in the last few years that really put their business model towards trading and making their money off of trades, that's gonna hurt them and are they gonna last? Some of them have picked up a lot of customers and so it may be very valuable for a bigger online broker to acquire them to take over those customers. But typically those customers are, uh, don't have as much investable assets um, and don't trade that frequently. So the value of the customer is a big deal and the smaller brokers that have come out in the last few years with the most valuable active customers are gonna be the ones that are the ripest targets. This is gonna be interesting to watch. Thank you so much as always, Caleb. Thank you. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.